have Nick Tyler, who is going to present on running jobs on Perlmuter. All right. Hey, everyone. Um, so I'm from the uh, data and analytics service group here at NERSC, and I'll be going over, yeah, running some jobs on Perlmutter. Um, so I'll be covering a lot, um, trying to, to get both the new people. So if you're brand new to NERSC, uh, welcome. Um, I'm going to kind of go over what a job is um, and how to run some of your code as a job. Uh, but if you're... Um, yeah, if you're new to NERSC, but you've been at HPC for a while, um, I'll go be going over some advanced topics uh, a little bit later, like running jobs and containers and workflows. Um, as always, uh, everything is uh, in our documentation. So uh, when you have questions or you or you want to look at example jobs, there's tons of these example jobs are from the, the NERSC documentation. And then we also have the script generator which can give you some more advanced options. If you already know how to run your jobs and you want some more advanced options, I recommend looking at the script generator to help you get some more of those advanced options. Um, and then tomorrow, there'll be some more uh, job running performance and profiling uh, tomorrow. So if you're new to HPC, what is a job? Um, so when you connect to Perlmutter, you get onto a login node. Um, that includes most Jupyter sessions as well. So if you're familiar with Jupyter or want to log in with Jupyter, those are all going to run on a login node. But our login nodes aren't meant for large computational tasks. Um, they're shared by all of our users. We have lots of users, and you want to be kind to your fellow user. Um, so we only have 40 login nodes, but we do have a lot of compute nodes. And so that's where your computation should go, on a compute node. So we have about... Uh, little less than 1,800 GPU nodes and a little over uh, 3,000 uh, CPU nodes for you to do all your work on. And so we have a couple different ways of accessing these compute nodes. Um, so one of them is through an interactive job. So this is going to be directly connecting um, your terminal session or your Jupyter session to a uh, compute node. Um, and then you would interact with this through the command line interface or maybe a Jupyter notebook um, as you're on that compute node. We also have uh, batch jobs. And so a batch job is where you're going to place uh, the code that you want to run into a script. And then you'll submit that script to a queue. And then you'll wait for all of that work to be done uh, and get processed on the compute nodes. So... Here at NERSC, we use Slurm to manage all of our jobs. Um, Slurm's an open source tool for being able to perform job scheduling. Um, and it takes care of a couple different responsibilities here at NERSC. So it, it allocates the actual resources that your job is going to use. Um, then it handles the uh, execution of the code that you want to run, as well as monitoring to make sure that there's no problems. Um, and then it also manages the priorities for all of our queues and all of our jobs. Um, even if you're a little bit familiar with Slurm, you might have used this. It's very common uh, for HPC systems to have Slurm. Uh, Slurm is configured differently at all the sites. And so um, there might be some differences in the scripts that you write uh, and some of the commands that you need to run uh, in order to see stuff here at NERSC. So how do I get a job from Slurm? So uh, you can get an interactive job by using the salloc command. Um, it's short for Slurm allocation. You're asking Slurm to allocate you a node or a set of nodes to be able to do your work on. Um, and here at NERSC, when you run the salloc command, um, it defaults to, to basically logging you into that compute node as a login shell um, and lets you go and compute there. So you can see here I've run this command. I was on login 25 and I ran this command and it automatically logged me into one of the compute nodes. You'll notice the compute node has a name that's NID 00 whatever, that means that you're on a compute node. So all of our compute nodes start with that NID uh, in front of them. So what does that command actually do? So the salloc command is, is asking Slurm, can you give me some compute resources? Um, here at NERSC, we use uh, our allocations are set up through accounts. And so you wanna say, hey, make sure that you charge this account for the job that I want to run. Um, that's usually going to be one of these M and then a whole lot of uh, numbers after it. Um, then you want to say, how many nodes do I need? Um, uh, this is going to be uh, number. Um, so nodes equals one. 
Um, and then I want to go and say how long I want that allocation for. So how long do I want this job to run? Uh, and so here we I put in 10 minutes. And then this is something that might be a little bit different here at NERSC um, is our uh, constraint option. So the constraint option is what we're going to use to decide whether you go onto a CPU node or a GPU node. Um, so that could be different at different sites depending on, on that. But here at NERSC, we're going to use uh, CPU to get on a CPU node and GPU to get on a GPU node. Uh, so you can also get interactive jobs uh, with Jupyter. Um, all of the options that are here in red uh, will actually get you a, a, a Jupyter session that is running on one of the compute nodes. Uh, but I'll leave that for tomorrow. So, so there's more information about Jupiter tomorrow. So come back tomorrow and learn more about that. Uh, so what do you want to use interactive jobs for? So a lot of times interactive jobs are good for uh, profiling your code, debugging your code, um, because our interactive queues are a little bit shorter and less nodes than, than a, a, a bigger job. So our interactive queue um, allows for one to four nodes and only four hours of max wall time. Um, and then we also have a shared interactive queue. So this means that you'll go on to a node that other people are also on, but you're still allowed to use compute on that node because uh, Slurm has, has allocated you a portion of that machine. Um, and so you can get up to half of a node um, with four hours max wall time. So that means um, for the shared interactive, you can get up to two GPUs on a GPU node with 32 cores, 64 threads, and about 120 gigabytes worth of RAM. Um, and then on a, a CPU node, that's 64 cores, 128 threads, and about 256 gigs of RAM. But what happens if you need more? You don't want to just run for four hours. You need more than, than a couple nodes. This is where you're going to use a batch script. Um, and so this allows you to write a script to put your work in um, and then submit that work into a queue. And then you're going to let Slurm handle all the scheduling. Um, and it will let, allow Slurm to give your job some more time, to give your job more resources. Um, and it's as simple as, as running sbatch on, on your script. Um, so what does sbatch do? It says it's the slurm batch command, um, and it submits your script that you wrote to the to the slurm scheduler uh, and lets slurm take care of the, the job. When you run this, you're going to get back the job ID, and we'll look later on how you can see how your jobs are doing based on that job ID. So the script kind of looks like this. Um, so you'll see it. Uh, this is a bash script that I've written. Um, and all of the options here are going to be really similar to what I showed you in the SL lock. So it still has our um, account information, the number of nodes we want, time, our constraint. Uh, and all of these sbatch options are going to be read in by Slurm. So Slurm reads these special comments that say uh, hashtag uh, sbatch on them. And it'll read those in and use those uh, to decide what it uh, what what you want to do in your script. Um, so here uh, I'm asking for four nodes for eight hours and I've changed the job name. So the job names can be helpful if you wanna go and name your uh, job in a particular way so that later on you can go and find out what that job was a little bit uh, better. I've also organized my output files a little bit. So these uh, last two, the minus O and minus E are the output file and the error file that's gonna come from the script. Um, and those, there's some special uh, characters that you can use for Slurm to identify those. Um, that can be really helpful if you want to go and organize your outputs and your error files to make sure you know what job uh, those outputs and errors are coming from. So uh, Slurm also adds some environment variables to your job for you. These can be really helpful because it'll tell you things like the number of nodes that it allocated to, to you, um, as well as some other things. And I'll go over some more of those uh, in a second. Um, the last part of the script here is our S run part. So this is for Slurm to run your job in parallel. You use this S run. 
Um, you're going to use this instead of maybe an MPI exec or MPI run, or there's also other schedulers also have a similar um, run command. So you're going to want to use this S run here at NERSC because then it allows Slurm to use uh, the right libraries um, in order to make your job run in parallel. And so here I'm just running um, one time per node because I've said I've asked Slurm, uh, I've asked S run to give me just one uh, per node to run host name. Um, so I'm just going to print out that that nice NID host name to make sure I'm on the compute nodes. So here's some helpful uh, Slurm variables. This might be something you want to go back and look at later. Um, but so Slurm will put some of these environment variables into your uh, into your environment for you, and then you can use them. Um, commonly, too, you might want to use them to uh, do some math calculations to figure out things like the total number of CPUs or tasks that your uh, program has, um, or the total number of GPUs um, that or GPUs per task that you have. Um, and these can be then used in the S run themselves to make sure that you have everything uh, set up properly as you're trying to run your jobs. Um, so I talked, a I kind of went over it a little bit, but uh, one of the options on there is going to be our minus Q uh, option. So that's going to choose what Q that your Slurm job goes into. So all of our queues here at NERSC have different uh, um, different things that you can do with them. So in our debug queue, which is used for debugging your jobs, maybe some small scaling tests, um, we allow for one to eight nodes and a 30 minute max wall time. So it's really just for testing your scripts. Um, you wanna just make sure that your job starts up properly, uh, maybe do a small number of iterations on something to make sure that it completes properly. But really, these are uh, a small amount of wall time because we want to be able to get these jobs into our queue and then processed really quickly so that you can uh, turn around pretty quickly. But to really get your science done, you're probably going to want to use the regular or the shared queues. So these allow for a longer lifetime uh, job lifetime, so 24 hours of max wall time. Um, and then you can submit up to 5,000 jobs uh, at max. So you can submit a lot of jobs through here. Um, and you'll use the minus Q regular. Um, or if you only if you know that you need less than a whole node, um, you can use the minus Q share. And this is, again, the same half node max per job. So uh, you can go and use that to submit to less than a full node worth of work. You can still use um, Slurm to do that. So a couple tips on debugging your scripts as well. So Slurm with the sbatch command, you can actually override all of the comments inside your file with command line options. And so this can be really helpful. You've written your script. You think that it's going to work. You know that you want to run it with 100 nodes, um, but you need to test it really quickly. And so what you can do is you can uh, prepend pre in front of your script the options of minus Q debug, um, minus N10 for a, a smaller amount of time than maybe your 24 hour max time. And you can also change the number of nodes in there as well, um, which can be helpful for uh, putting it into smaller queues. So once you have your jobs running, you wanna see uh, what's happening. So we can use the SQ command um, to view Slurm's queue information. Um, the default SQ command will give you information for all jobs in the Slurm queue for all users. Um, that can be a lot of information, especially for a really packed system like Perlmutter. Um, so NERSC has made a little shortcut called SQS. Um, this both goes and shows you just your jobs, which is helpful. But it also has um, some nice output that you can see here at the bottom. Um, so it can you can see here I have a couple jobs uh, in the queue at the moment. Um, one of them is running because um, it has that minus R under the state. Um, and then the other one is pending. It has that PD, which means that it's just waiting in the queue. It's waiting to start that job. There's also things on here like the time that I submitted it, uh, the time limits, uh, when the job started, um, and then those uh, features, which is going to be that same as that constraint of whether I had a GPU or a CPU uh, node that I was asking for that. 
So what happens if you make a mistake? Um, you can use the s cancel command to cancel your job. So usually this is going to be for um, you started a job, maybe you realize that something's wrong, uh, the output files that you're seeing aren't what you expect. Um, you, you're going to want to cancel that job, um, both for our systems to go and make sure that uh, you're clearing that out of our systems, but also this helps you conserve your NERSC hours. If you make a mistake, you ran the same job twice and you don't need the, the second one, um, then make sure that you just pull that out of the queue with the S cancel command. So to view information about jobs that have uh, already completed, um, you can use this S, uh, S account command. Um, so this will do a Slurm accounting for us. Um, so by default, this shows you all of the jobs completed in the last day. Um, and you can see here, uh, it has things like the job ID, the job name, um, what account it was uh that it went to, as well as the state. Uh, if it was completed, there's one in here that was canceled. Um, so you can see all of the, the information about that job finishing. Um, if you want to just know about a specific job, you can actually use the minus J with the job ID. Um, and so this shows you information just about a specific job. So if you have lots of jobs in the queue, lots of them just finished, um, you can use this minus J to get a little bit more information about a single job. Uh, you can also search through um, the accounting with some different commands as well. So there's lots more. Uh, I would say you can use the S account help or the man page to see a lot more. But ones that I think are useful are being able to, to search by the job name, as well as maybe something like the constraint. You want to only see the jobs that you've run on GPUs, um, or you know that you've named all your jobs something in particular, and you want to check on those type of jobs. You can use these extra commands in order to, to search through. Okay. So now I'm gonna go a little bit into um, some jobs in containers. So containers are a great way to make your uh, software portable um, and it can help decrease the startup time for especially large jobs um, that use shared libraries. So this is gonna be something like uh, Python. Um, at NERSC, we support two different container technologies. Um, both of them developed here by uh, some great staff. Um, one of them is Shifter. Um, this was fully developed here uh, by our staff. And then Podman HPC, which is an extension onto a container technology called Podman, um, which is also that extension was built here at NERSC. And so um, one of the nice features about Podman HPC is we can actually now build our images, build these containers here at NERSC on the login nodes. Um, maybe at other sites you've heard of something of like Singularity or Aptainer. Uh, we don't support that here at um, on Perlmutter. We do support the other two, Shifter and Podman. So what is a container? So it's a way to pack up all of our software. Um, Docker is probably maybe the most familiar that people have heard of. It's the commercial version that a lot of people use. And uh, if you want to get started, there's lots of tutorials online. Uh, search the name Docker and you'll find out. Um, but basically the idea is uh, this three-step process called build, ship, and run. So building in the container is like compiling. You want to go get all the libraries that you want. So here uh, on the right-hand side, I have this Docker file. It says I want to use my favorite operating system, Ubuntu. I want to install these packages. Um, maybe I want to install my Python packages. And then I have some extra code or something uh, that I want to to go in and build. Um, so I'm going to run my CMake command to build all of that code. So that's the build portion. So that helps you so that you can go and you can build your software. You can make sure that it runs in that container and then it should run uh, anywhere else that you that you want to do it. Um, then the other two portions are ship and run. Um, so how do I ship my container? Um, so you can ship to uh, Docker Hub. There's a um, open Docker Hub. That has some limits to how, how much you can pull uh, with it and some other limits. But NERSC has a registry as well. So a registry is where you would push your image to. It's a, just an online website that's going to hold that container for you. Um, so in order to build and ship your containers to our registry, you can just add on this registry.nurse.gov slash your uh, M account name. Um, and then give it a name uh, that you want to do. 
So this will go and uh, tag it so that it, when you upload it with the uh, Docker push, it'll upload it to our registry. Um, before you ship it, you need to log into the registry. So you can do a Docker login uh, with the registry, and that'll be your regular uh, NERSC password um, to log into registry. And then once you've uh, shipped it, then we can run these with either Shifter or Podman HPC. So for Shifter, um, the first thing you're going to want to do is pull your image. So that's the, the final step in, in Docker is pulling your image onto the machine. Um, and then we're just going to add a couple lines into our, uh, into our regular script that we've been running to make sure that we're running inside of our image. So one thing that's helpful is that in the sbatch command itself, you can add this image uh, command or this image option. And that will go and um, it tells Slurm that you want to use this specific image uh, when you're running your commands. Then in the command itself, we'll just add the shifter in front of the command that you want to run. Um, and Slurm will know to run the command from the container instead of from the regular operating system. Um, we also have some extra options for shifter. So these are, uh, you can put behind the shifter portion and get some extra things. So one of these is volume mounts. You can mount in um, the file systems that you want into different places in the container. Um, you can set environment and variables inside the container. You can also just clear out all the environment variables inside the container that were copied from the host. Um, you can set where you want to work. And then we have some of these extra things called modules. So the modules are there so that you can use things like MPI, um, CVMFS, um, our GPUs, and then specific uh, versions of things like um, CUDA MPitch or a nickel. Um, so those are gonna help with your, your networking portions of your code. Um, so in a similar way, uh, you can also run uh, Podman HPC containers. So you're still, before you start your job, you're gonna wanna run Podman HPC poll and then that image name. But here, instead of putting the image in the uh, in the sbatch line, you're gonna tell Podman HPC to run from that image and then you can put your command after it. Um, if you're familiar with Docker, the podman HPC co uh, commands are going to look a lot similar to Docker uh, because they're both this um, OCI compliant, the Open Container Initiative compliant. Um, so yeah, so uh, when I talked about the build, ship, run, um, we can also do this on a login node uh, on Perlmutter. So this is a, a nice feature of podman HPC. So you can go and do Podman HPC build and give it a name. And then instead of shipping it, you can migrate instead. So in, you'll skip the in-between step of uploading it to a server. It just puts the image then uh, onto your scratch disk so that you can actually use it when you want to run a, a command. Um, so there's some options too for uh, that are similar to the Docker options or Podman options on your own personal computer. Um, so all of the kind of normal ones work, um, like the volume or the host network. We also have some similar options, similar to our shifter modules, in order to put a lot of those networking features in or to add support for GPUs. Uh, so maybe you need to run more than just a single job. There's more that work to be done than just one single executable. Um, so what are some things that I can do? Uh, so we can bundle our jobs together with Slurm um, and have multiple executables run simultaneously. Um, we can also use things like job arrays uh, to have the same task be done on different uh, nodes. Um, and then if you have a little bit more work to do, maybe some more complicated uh, dependencies between things, we can look at uh, tools like a new parallel, um, which can help you fit lots of small tasks onto a node and pack that node full of work. Um, or we have more complex tools like uh, Parcel, Fireworks, Balsam. We support a whole lot of um, different workflow tools here at NERS. Um, so bundling jobs. So there's a couple different ways that you can bundle uh, the work that you need to get done. Um, one of them is by running them sequentially. So 
in this example we have, um, I've asked for four nodes. Uh, and then in my S runs, um, I'm splitting up those nodes into different ways, but it still would equate to four nodes when we're running this. Um, and then I want to run all of these commands um, and they'll be submitted sequentially. So your first program will run, uh, it will finish, and then it, then your script will run the next program, it will finish, and then uh, it'll run the next program. And so this can be helpful to reuse the same allocation of nodes for different steps in a workflow that you have. Um, so then you only have to wait in the queue once, use all the nodes that you want, and then once you're done with them, you can release them back uh, to everyone else. Um, you can also run uh, things simultaneously. And so one way to do this is to uh, instead put a ampersand at the end. Um, but instead, my S runs are now here uh, only asking for one node uh, and one node worth of CPUs instead of trying to use all of those nodes. And so I've asked for four nodes, but I, what I'm asking Slurm to do is run all of these and then the ampersand is a, a Linux uh, way of saying background this task um, and let me run other things. Then what we'll do is we'll add the wait command at the end, uh, which will wait for all of those processes that we put in the background to finish before we continue on. Um, so this can be helpful if you have something like maybe you have multiple input files and you, you know that you can run all of them uh, you know, simultaneously that they don't need to talk to each other, you could use something like this um, to easily go and run multiple jobs. Um, another way of doing something similar uh, would be using a job array. Um, so in a job array, you can go and, and put this extra command array equals uh, and then put a number, a range of jobs that you want to do. Um, so this can be helpful if you just have the same program, the same analysis that you want to do, but you need to do it a thousand times, a hundred times, something like that. Um, and then you can use, again, one of these uh, extra variables that Slurm puts in, the Slurm array job ID, um, to add in the extra part uh, to, to make sure that you're doing the work that you want to do for each one of those uh, separate jobs. Um, one other tool that could be very helpful is GNU Parallel. So this is a, a simple workflow manager, um, and it's great for doing many small tasks that don't need S runs. Um, so we don't recommend running commands that need S run inside of here. Um, so if you don't need the parallel features of MPI or anything, you're just running scripts, um, then you can use this to go and uh, on a single node, fill up the entire node with work that you want to be able to do. Um, something that's really nice about GNU Parallel as well is that as a task finish, the next one will start uh, automatically. And so you can have uh, a thousand tasks running, um, or if you need to run a thousand tasks, you can run them in batches uh, and it'll automatically go through all of your things for you um, as you're going. So we also have some more complex uh, workflow tools if you need things like dependencies, um, a lot of these are written in Python. So if you're familiar with Python, working in Python, then this can be a great way uh, to chain all of your jobs together, to chain all those dependencies together. Uh, recently, we had a, uh, a workflow training between uh, OLCF and ALCF. Um, and so we have some documentation there um, that's really helpful for getting started with some of these tools on our systems. Um, but also feel free to reach out uh, at help.nurse.gov um, with more questions about workflow tools. Okay, so some best practices. So um, this is going to talk a little bit about how jobs are scheduled. So each job as it's scheduled has a different priority value. And so it's going to be based on the user, uh, the quality of ser service or our queue that you're in, um, and the account. So one thing about our jobs here is only two jobs in this group uh, will gain priority at a time. So more jobs than two can run, but only two of these jobs will gain priority at a time. So if they're sitting in the queue in that pending state, only two of those will, will run. Um, and so our main scheduler uses a priority list and then schedules for a few days in the future. So it's looking at uh, all of the jobs that it can schedule and it schedules those. 
And then once it's scheduled those, it will start to backfill and prioritize uh, utilization by filling in these, these holes uh, in, our, in our scheduler. Um, so some tips that can help you is a large job with uh, a large allocation um, because the per node aging is going to be the highest. It counts as one job, even if it has a lot of nodes in it. And so because of that, our scheduler can can put it, um, can schedule a little bit easier than having a lot of really small jobs. Um, also, if your job can be broken up into really small time pieces, um, you can use shorter length jobs to help fill in in that backfill queue. Um, this can also be done with a workflow manager. If the workflow manager knows uh, the scheduler, it can usually find smaller tasks that it can fit inside of our scheduler uh, pretty well. Um, another tip is to use the right time request to Slurm. Uh, there's a really, there's a balance here because you wanna have enough time that your job is gonna complete uh, without failing but you also want to make sure that you're not just asking always for 12 hours or 24 hours, uh, even if your job only takes four, because Slurm doesn't realize that it's gonna take four um, and it's only gonna realize what, what you tell it to do. Um, and so if you ask for a lot more time than, than you need, then Slurm's gonna have to, to allocate that amount of time in the scheduler and that can take a lot longer for them to, to wait. Um, I'll point out again, uh, the script generator. Um, so this script generator is on uh, the My Nurse page. And especially if you know more about um, the threading options that you want and some other options, uh, this can help you as a starter to go and get a lot of those SRUN options uh, in your script. Okay, so we covered a lot. Um, I went over kind of what jobs were, how we make our jobs, how we put our codes into those jobs, um, some running containers and workflows. And then again, I'll point out our, our docs and our script generator. Um, and then come back tomorrow uh, if you want to know more about running jobs in uh, Jupyter. Um, that'll be around 930 tomorrow. And then they're also right after that uh, should be job performance and profiling. Um, to give you a little bit more info about jobs. Great, that's it, thanks.